There are many times that God can be quiet in a generation. God Almighty will leave man to their own devices. When men become rebellious, Bible say God gave them up to a reprobate heart. So man began to carry out his own desires. Man became the governor of his own life. And you see, on that part, you may experience what humans call success. You will thrive in the realms of humans because the evil man will actually prosper in a generation governed by evil. There is no cause for an evil man in a generation ruled by evil. The righteous man will suffer in a generation ruled by evil. But in a generation ruled by righteousness, the righteous man will be promoted. The righteous will rejoice. However, the evil will be judged. So, the scale of judgment in every generation is determined by the ruling power. And you see, when evil rules a place, a lot of times, for the righteous to experience peace, God has to intervene. There needs to be a divine intervention for the righteous man in that generation to actually experience peace. Because if the evil rule, only the evil will prosper. If the corrupt rules, only the corrupt will prosper. The righteous cannot prosper under the rule of the corrupt, except God intervenes. So a lot of times when the generations are pulled away from God, you will observe that God will be silenced in the affair of men. However, he will be active with his chosen servants in the cave. And you will see a season of preparation, a season of brooding. God speaking to his people, telling them the wickedness that is in the land, preparing his prophets and prophetess, preparing his chosen verse until one day you see the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible said, John dwelt in the wilderness, active with God, until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. Israel had been observing a quiet time where it seems as though there was no longer prophets or prophecy and everything was quiet. Yes, Hannah was interceding in the temple she was known for one with the revelations and visions that comes from, from God. She was recognized by Judaism as of that time, as one who was prophetic. But there was no nation-shaking manifestation. Something that would travel throughout the whole regions of Israel until John appeared. And for the first time, we saw that all Jerusalem and Judea gathered to one man. Now the question is this. Where was this people when he was alone in the wilderness? There may be people that must have passed by where, where he was lodging. And, oh, this madman that revolted and disconnected from community and decided to go and live alone in the wilderness. Oh, the madman. But there's a time for a showing forth. Someone say hallelujah. There's a time. There's a time. Maximize the seasons of the cave. Maximize it. Because before you bear fruit upward, you must what? Take root downward. You, you take root downward. In those seasons, it will seem as though the wicked is prospering. But take root downward. In those seasons, you may be mocked. I say, oh, if God is with you, why are you not prospering? Take root downward. The message is, is forming root in the hearts of those. I remember in those days, my father and Lord Apostle Arome, with the depth of his revelation, it was as though he was confined to a small part of Makodi, where you only find few people who love God, who want to pray. Those are the people you find there. And would only see a crowd whenever there's contact. And this was after many years of labor in campuses. So in this crowd, you'll find only youths, mostly youths. And then his friends that by the leading of the Lord, they had signed their lives to serve God under him. I say, if you do a discipleship ministry, it's not the easiest way to be wealthy because you'll discover that you are spending more than you are even getting. What with the average youth who, who just lost prayer? He doesn't have any direction in life, but he caught the fire and it ignited upon his passion for prayer. What will he give to you? He wish he could give to you, but there's nothing he can give to you. And so our father-in-law will use his salary. And if you look at my life, you're actually looking at what my father-in-law experienced. I'm grateful that I'm counted worthy by the Lord to even experience what it means to stand with mighty men in the cave and go through the process and take root. Your faith established. But it's on the long run. The beautiful thing about this kind of priesthood is that you are going to raise a generation. If he sent you to raise up an army, then you must understand that armies are not raised in the entertainment centers. So when God seems to be quiet, it means God is preparing the people. All together.